Well, we've done these America's Memory videos all over the United States, but right now I am on the grounds of Mount Vernon, George Washington's home. And I have to be honest with you, this one is the one I am most excited about as of today as far as all the videos we've done. Uh, looking, getting ready to see the mansion of, of, of the first president of the United States, the first American military war hero is where he came back to after uh, he was uh, he fought in the Revolutionary War and he came back here to his wife Martha and his family and we're walking on those grounds. Behind these trees over here is the mansion and you are seeing it along with me. This is my first time to ever see it uh, and you're seeing it at the same time as me. To be walking down the exact path that George Washington rode his horse up on as after the Revolutionary War was over and he was going back home. And here we are, just feet away from George Washington's home. Pretty cool. The central breezeway of the home, this is actually wider than it looks. It spans the entire width of the house. And during the hot summers, they would open up the doors on both ends. And the wind coming through would serve as a cool area of the home for entertaining and just hanging out. This is George Washington's study. Here he had 884 books, and of course he had to read because he didn't have americasmemory.com. But every morning he'd wake up about 4 or 5 in the morning, take the private staircase down from the master bedroom to the study, and he'd write letters that gave our nation momentum. Uh, and he'd write letters and papers and do business until about 7 a.m. And then at 7 a.m. he'd have breakfast, head out, work on the, on the farm all day or tend to his, uh, his business and he would come back to the study, work a little bit at night, and then normally retire about 9 p.m. This is the actual bed in the master bedroom where George Washington breathed his last breath. This room was the room that he and Martha shared up until his death. After Washington's death, Martha closed the door on the master bedroom. She didn't want to sleep in that room anymore because it was perhaps too painful. She moved her bedroom to the third floor, and this smaller room is her bedroom for the next two and a half years until she passed away herself. This is where Alban Rollins lived. He was the assistant to George Washington, and he was a bachelor. This room is close enough to Washington's study that whenever he needed him, he could call for him quickly. Now, I hate doing laundry as it is, but imagine this. This is where the Washington slave women would do laundry. They'd have to carry 25 to 30 buckets of water to do one load of laundry, and they worked here six days of a week cleaning the laundry for Washington and his guests. Now, here's one mode of transportation that looks kind of silly to me. It's called a riding chair because, well, it's a riding chair. It was smaller. It could go down smaller lanes of traffic. It's kind of the moped of the day, if you ask me. And now we're going to go check out his garage. What kind of car did George Washington have in his garage? Check this out. Pretty sophisticated. Now, this wasn't actually his carriage. None of his carriages survived, but this is a one that was made by the same guy who, who made Washington's cart, and uh, David and Francis Clark were their names. You want to tell me what the most interesting thing to know about this farm? Well, basically, it's, it's pretty much a visionary farm. Uh, this is a postage stamp of four acres of his 3,200 acres that he's got going on here. And by the map here, you can see that he splits his farmland up into seven different fields, and that's what we've got here, or seven different fields. So um, our field over here would normally have sheep in it. We moved them up to a couple of fields just on the other side of here. Uh, he but he would have two of the seven fields full of sheep. And with sheep, basically, it's just the manure that you're looking for, so they would graze all year long. And at the end of the year, he'd pull them out of there and then turn over that land, and then it'd all be fertilized, ready to grow something, crop the next year. 
he'd have a third field that he called green manure, and with that he would grow something like, um, oh, chickpeas or something like that, um, buckwheat, something like that, and then he would just turn it over, he wouldn't harvest it, so that, that's green manure, just to put nutrients back into the soil. And then he'd have two fields full of wheat, which is his cash crop now, he'd have a field of oats and then a field of corn and potatoes where you grow a row of corn and then a row of potatoes and then corn and potatoes. So that's how he would lay out his farmland. And that's how big this place is, 8,000 acres? Well, not today. Okay. Not today. No, we, we are about 500 acres today. Oh. On this map here, this little gold part is, that, that's all we've got left. Okay, and the rest is? The rest is all private property. Okay. Actually, we do have some land out here. We've got about 10 acres out here on Doug Run Farm. Washington would fence these animals in and then have them manureize it. Just created a word. So this is a reconstruction of a barn that Washington invented and it's to simplify wheat processing. Basically horses come in and they trot on the wheat and the uh, percussion of their hooves knocks the grain free and it goes down through these slats to the floor below where it can be swept up and seen and taken to the mill to be ground into flour. And that's replacing an older method where people would beat it with a stick. Oh, and uh, George, not George Bush, George Washington invented that? He invented this floor. Um, animal treading had been around for a while. When George Washington was here, something like this was here? Um, oh, yes. We are built over top the original foundation of Washington's blacksmith shop. Okay. This is the same placement, uh, dimensions, everything. So we are pretty faithful to what Washington had here when he was alive. So what is the, what is it the most common thing he would make here? They would be primarily making farm tools and repairing them as well. And what? Repairing them? Repairing the tools. Okay. See those two ladies right there? They just kicked me out. I was in restricted area and did not know it. Slave quarters. How many times must have, uh, George Washington sat on a bench similar to this overlooking the Potomac where he ca captured his fish? How relaxing uh, that must have, must have been and what a, what a great view, what a great source of income as well. Uh, one million uh, fish a year were captured in uh, the first, started in the first two weeks of April. When he was kind of an ordinary guy. He, um, he, he had a dog uh, named Vulcan, and Vulcan, one day when Martha was cooking dinner, uh, Vulcan went up and grabbed the, the dinner off the table and, and took off with it, and the, the ham was recovered. Uh, it, and whenever the guests came over, uh, Washington laughed about it and joked about it and told them about it, but nobody still wanted to eat the ham. Uh, he, had, he had one guest. Uh, oftentimes, guests would come and stay with Washington. And, and um, after his presidency, the year after his presidency, over 600 guests alone came and visited him in his house. Obviously all of them didn't stay. Uh, in particular there was uh, one, one, uh, one group, that a family, that, that stayed and they stayed 13 months. Uh, and, when, and, and Washington wrote in his journal when he's left, finally he leaves today. But he also said that he enjoyed having him there because he was a regular guy. He, wo he enjoyed watching this regular guy interacting with uh, the aristocrats, the sophisticated. And so kind of tells me that Washington himself perhaps was kind of a regular regular guy who accomplished some massively impressive things, being a, a war hero, being a president of the United States, leading a nation, and, and, and building uh, this, this estate here, and how he got the most out of his land, and got the most out of the river, and got the most out of everything is really a model for everybody. Um, but he was also a regular guy, in a sense, and, and that's, that's a feeling that I really get from, from, from this place, and uh, a regular guy who did some really impressive things. I got to think that Washington's kids would go swimming in that river, you know, and they'd, they'd play around in the... I bet you Washington's kids had a, a fort in these, in these trees, you know, and they would play in these trees. And after he, after he served his second term as president, uh, he came back here and uh, he lived for two years. And this is until he, uh, he died uh, in the bed just up the hill 
at the mansion. Sad to think that he was only 67 years old and he only got to enjoy this for two, two and a half years after his presidency, but uh, he did get to enjoy it. Takeaway number one, Washington inherited Mount Vernon from his half-brother Lawrence. To remember the name Lawrence, I see a law book with rent money coming out. On his brick fence, I want you to see a law book with money coming out of it, rent money, to remind you of Lawrence. Takeaway number two, Washington became president in 1789. For the number 89, I always use an hourglass for number 8 because it's shaped like an 8, and a cat for 9 because a cat has 9 lives. So for the number 89, visualize a cat looking at an hourglass right there next to the statue of his family. A cat and an hourglass for the number 89. Washington was elected in 1789. Takeaway number three, Washington gave up power twice. He first gave up power when he was general of the army, and then he also gave up power when he refused a third term as president to return home to Mount Vernon. To remind myself that he gave up power twice, I visualize a power cord out in the farm area of Mount Vernon. A power cord because he gave up power twice. Well, as I exit now with Mount Vernon behind me and I have spent the day at this uh, majestic place, it gives you a great sense of history and pride in America. And uh, this is one of my most favorite adventures that we have had together. If you are ever in the Washington, D.C. area, the Alexandria, Virginia area, you must, must, must come to Mount Vernon. And when you do, you're going to get a great sense of what a great man this he was, how greatly respected he was, how well he, how well he took care of his home, how well he took care of his family, how well he took care of his country, and uh, how humble of a man he was to, to give up power, not once but twice, power as a general of the army and power as president of the United States. And uh, he was definitely a man worthy of being the first president of the United States, and this Place, this estate is worthy of a president of the United States. You gotta come here, you gotta come visit, and when you do, you're gonna be, maybe like me, realize it wasn't that long ago. It was about, you know, 225 years ago, and that's a long time, but it's not a long time in the, in the scheme of the world, in the scheme of history. And, and so he, it wasn't that long ago that he was here. You need to come here. As I walk off the property of Mount Vernon with the mansion behind me, I remind you, my name's Ron White and I am America's memory.